Hey everybody, I'm Tony Barberino. Welcome to another podcast. Today we're talking about a lovely subject, the dirty four-letter word. Yep, talking about mold, M-O-L-D. You probably seen some in your house or haven't seen it yet. Ew, yuck. So, you know, some of us think we can handle it, but what happens when it's a real problem? Do you know it's a real problem or not? Well, boy, do I have great news for you. I'm bringing on some wonderful guests from Same Day Restoration, and here they are. We have Rebecca and Fabian. Guys, take a moment, introduce yourselves. Fabian, go ahead. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm Fabian uh, Miranda with Same Day Restoration. I've been doing this for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For oh, Day looks like I'm getting a technical difficulty here. Hold on for a few seconds, guys. You broke it, Fabian. There we go. All right, I'm back. You always fix okay, it. so can you guys hear me okay? Give me a thumbs up. All right. Okay, so moving forward, uh, let's go ahead and we're going to go into some questions here uh, after you guys get a chance to introduce yourself. So, Rebecca, uh, can you take a moment and introduce your company, let people know who you are, and then we can bounce over to the, the dashing gentleman with the lovely mustache. <laughs> Yes, uh, my name is Rebecca Plord. I am the Director of Operations here at our Orange County location for Same Day Restoration. Uh, we are a family owned business that focuses on the Irvine community. Um, and we're really here to help uh, the neighbors and community around um, this area with water damage, mold damage, um, fire and smoke, especially with you know the fires that have been going on. But our main goal is to help people get their homes back to pre-loss condition. Fantastic. And let me get this dashing, manly man, Fabian. Gentlemen, sir, introduce yourself, please. Good morning, everyone. I'm Fabian Miranda with Same Day Restoration. Uh, I'm project manager and field supervisor for the company. Ah. And he's also he's also a part-time movie star. Don't let him fool you. Yeah, yeah. I, think I, I think I saw you on Netflix last night. You were good. That car chase? At least I think it was you. So... Uh, they're fun, lovely people, folks. Uh, Rebecca's on. This is her second time. Uh, I actually had good private feedback. She was there. Uh, people really loved it, and they actually were thanking me that she was there to talk. She, they said, and everyone said about the same thing. They seemed like she seemed like a really nice girl. And I said, "Boy, you love Rebecca. Wait till we have Fabian on." Oh my gosh! <laughs> there we go. Now we got now we got both of you on. So I got star power today, guys. Meaning you, I, I just here to balance it out. So there's there's you guys and there's me. So, <laughs> hey, uh, so we're talking today about mold. Oh boy, mold! Everybody's favorite creature. Well, if it's cheese, then we're talking blue cheese. Then we're okay. But for everything else, we're talking that ugly, yucky stuff that we tend to find under the sink or on the bathroom wall. So, uh, Fabian, can you take a moment? Just, uh, just kind of run through some examples, not everything, but some examples where people, you know, typically find mold in places in your experience where you found it that people went, what? So they didn't have an idea where this creature sits. Uh, typical spots are, are usually under sinks, uh, run toilets, uh, showers. Um, sometimes if uh, we can go ahead and find any ceilings, we have any roof, roof issues or plumbing issues um usually where we typically see it yep can it get as bad as um uh i mean i would i'm just guessing that if untreated it can really get around the house and then you're talking a whole lot of damage and a whole lot of work would that be fair to say yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes yes it could uh definitely if it's not caught on time um for any kind of mold issues can continue growing with constant moisture, uh, if there's constant moisture in the affected area, it can continue growing and, and it can become a, a bigger issue. So uh, generally, um, I mean, I, I guess moisture is the one we all know, but are, are there any other variables that have a tendency to cause mold? I mean, in addition to moisture, what else, uh, uh, what other variables could there be? I mean, I know none of us are scientists, but are there other knickknacks that uh, affect mold that we should be aware of? The type of moisture that actually is affecting the building material, um, if it's uh, what we call a category three, which is bacterial water, it could definitely start growing um, mold issues faster than what it would be clean water. Ooh. <laughs> yep, there's a lot of bacteria that goes into any sewage, uh, any backup, 
um, any type of bacteria can go ahead and definitely speed up that process. I guess, so So the easy answer is anything yucky. <laughs> yeah, know. I think the best way to say that would be it needs, it's a live organism. So you need the dampness, right? It needs the right environment to grow and it needs something to eat. So the porous material that Fabian's talking about is drywall, carpet, wood. Um, you need kind of the right environment and the right factors for you to have the mold grow. Did you say carpet? Oh, man. I already vacuumed. I have... My wife, we have a carpet in some part of the house. She hates it, but you know we're, we're going to change it eventually. Now I feel itchy, like I need to grab my uh, my homemade uh, my home steamer and go do my carpets twice. Thanks, guys. <laughs> oh yuck! It's okay. I mean, we'll go over the process to remediate it properly because this that, ah that'll funny. be Vivian's uh, area of expertise there. Yeah, funny you should say that. Uh, that's probably a big a big thing right there. A lot of people who watch, we we have people chiming in. Oh God, wow. That's good stuff. Uh, the, who knew mold is popular? Everyone's like, oh, that, that is a bad thing. What do I do? Oh, they're going live. Um, the process to remediate it, uh, just so that people, I don't want to say help them not feel as angry or feel as stressed or feel as bad, but just so they understand. Because, you know, I'm thinking, what do you guys use? Like a flamethrower? Do you tent the house? I mean, what are some examples of ways you remediate the, the mold issue when you find it? You know, going from not everything, but little things, medium things, and oh boy, that's bad shape. What are some of the things you guys can do to remediate that? Our remediation process, it's pretty much we want to go ahead and focus on the area that we need to address uh, and we want to go ahead and contain uh, what we call chambers uh, so we don't cross contaminate throughout the rest of the property. Uh, we want to have the correct equipment in there, which will use air scrubbers to purify the actual chamber. And of course, our, our, um, our PPE, which would be uh, full suited and, and a special mask that we use. Um, to protect ourselves as well as uh, the customer by building that uh, chambers and having the equipment on site while we're removing the affected material that might be uh, contaminated with mold. So is it, uh, is it, would it be fair to say then, um, I'm trying to picture my mind like those movies where people wear hazmat suits. I mean, can it get that bad that it, could it get that bad when left untreated? That you have to wear, like you know, the special suits and rebreathers and stuff like that. Could it could it get that bad? I don't. No. Go ahead, Fabian. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, Rebecca, uh, take a shot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is Fabian's area of expertise, but I can say that you know you see people in those hazmat, and I'm using air quotes, is that it, that's actually necessary for all of our jobs. Our equipment, our technicians are always going to be in that PV. It's uh, safety for them. It's safe for the homeowner, but also per IICRC standards. We need to have personal protective equipment for anyone that's ha ha handling a hazardous material. And that is what mold is considered to be. So uh, the severity of your job, um, like you're talking about, could it get that bad? That would be more of the extent of maybe what we have to remove, how big you can ha have your containment, how many containments you have. But anytime you have a mold job, the people sh should be in the proper prote personal protective equipment. Whoa. So if I were doing a home inspection with a home inspector and they got mold and I see a guy taking some Clorox breach and a sponge while smoking a cigarette, I should probably question that, huh? Yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. This is not the 1930s, folks. <laughs> You're good to go. Well, well, Fabian's got the, 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 the manly mustache. Boy, <laughs> I see someone like him walk in. I go, oh, we're safe. <laughs> Usually, you have to be surprised how many calls we get. They'll forget his name, and then they'll be like, oh, the guy with the fantastic mustache. See, <laughs> see? it's your trademark. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's your trademark. Oh, my God. I want to see a poster of that guy. We got you covered. <laughs> 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 While holding a martini. <laughs> hey, uh, speaking of which, uh, again, we're trying to you know put some light on a, on a subject that's ugly. Um, now, in terms of toxicity, I have read variable things. I see, you know, mold, certain molds can be toxic generally they're not so there's this information goes back and forth you know i'm not saying which one's right or wrong i just hear it so could either of you take a moment uh and let us know you know do is the mold that we usually see in a house is it toxic could it be toxic or is there a way to know like oh boy run that is toxic 
Can anyone elaborate on that? Not that, again, I knew you have to check and we're not looking at the actual mold, but just in terms of a story, can you give us some examples of that? Um, yeah, I can go ahead and do that. Um, so there's a lot of different types of molds. If you're asking if you know how it's toxic, the best uh, route for you would be to call an environmental company. Uh, we do not do in house testing, we refer that out um, just because it negates the conflict of interest. Um, and the oh. testing company will come out and they will take air samples and take um, a couple of different types of samples to go ahead and run through their labs. And then what they do is they call and they say, hey, Fabian, or hey, Rebecca, um, this person has mold. And they'll go ahead and send us the report. And then what we do at that point, if it's a toxic mold, um, we can go ahead and give them a protocol for remediating it. But the, the best way to do it would be to have it ran through a lab. I have a question popped up. Sure. Melanie Mars, uh, at, can you just put bleach? There you go. Of course, you know, not while holding a martini and a cigarette and a sponge, but hey, can you just put bleach on it? Which is funny because when I'm done with the show, I got to go to my master bath where the kids are splashing <laughs> too much. And there's a little area, just a little area. I'm like, you know, I got some, I got, I got four jars of Clorox bleach and I'm going to go scrub it. But to her point, legitimate question, can you just put bleach on it? The simple, easy answer would be no. Uh, you can wipe it down and it's going to take that surface off and it's going to look pretty. Um, however, you're wiping it down without removing the source. Um, one of my project managers, the way that he explains it is it's like pruning a rose bush um, without taking the roots out. It's still going to grow back. So bleach is not uh, an acceptable <laughs> answer to remediate. Oh, so Thank you, though, Melanie. So having those seven gallons of bleach over here, well, it's good for cleaning garbage cans. I like to not have the garbage cans smell, so I give it a little splash of that and I rinse it, and that's garbage cans, I guess, for everything else. So I have a one-year supply to clean my garbage cans. Great. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, no, fair enough, though. That's that's a good, uh, good point she brought up as a question. I bet there's going to be people who will watch the playback on this and go, just put bleach on it. Well... For what for whatever nuggets I could possibly add based on my four thousand year old biological science degree, which I forgot most stuff. Um, but when it comes to mold, uh, there's a tendency I've heard that it's not just there. There, it, it came from some like your bread, you know, pizza and bread and stuff like that. When you see mold, the mold has been growing before you were visually able to to actually see it. On a, on a microscopic level. So it's probably been there a while and it's probably reasonable to assume in a house, if you guys see something that is an actual, like an actual problem, you're like, oh gosh, that's a lot of mold under the sink. What happened? It's probably worse than what you know. But to know, you have to call someone like your company, same day restoration. You guys are linked up with laboratories who can, like you said, which was, which was really open of you to say, you don't want to have a conflict of interest because just companies go, yeah, I see mold. Sure, we'll test it. Well, of course they're going to say that. Having a third party come in and they say, nah, you're fine. Just wipe it. Or, uh-oh, we really got to treat this. That's nice to have a third party to come in to say whether it, what it is and what needs to be done so that companies like yourself can say, look, we got you covered. Let's go ahead and take care of this. And that's why I have you guys on because of that honesty and openness. Because um, I'm sure there are some people when they go through escrow and they have a mold problem, they think, oh, it's the end of the world. And I know because I had an escrow on a listing and it only wound up being a $300 total. At, again, it could be anywhere from 30 grand to 30 bucks. This is a $300 problem. That's with testing. It took a day and everything was fine. But at first, everyone was up in arms. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. There's mold. It's, stop. Stop. We don't know exactly what we're dealing with. Let's call Same Day Restoration. Have them come look. Have them have that third-party lab. Do what they got to do. Get answers. And I'm sure you guys could put a plan in place and resolve it. You know? It's, like, I mean, it's not like fire. Like, if you're, God forbid, your house is on fire, that's a, that's a whole different creature. But mold... You know, it's it's not really fast. It's not even uh, it's not even fast as a coronavirus. I mean, it's there, it's growing, it's a plant essentially, I guess. So we have time, but I would suggest people if if you have an issue, or you think you have an issue, or you're going to list your home eventually. I mean, 
it, it, they say if you if a seller doesn't know of something and somebody finds it later when they sell it, that's one thing. But it's always nice to have your house checked. You know, you do a home inspection, get a termite, maybe check for mold, and handle it. Because it's nice to have your home very well prepared so you have less issues. And if something happens, you know, people ask me, uh, I had a flood, there was a fire, there's smoke. Same day restoration. Why? I know you guys. You're putting the time in to help people, and I think that's very noble. Rebecca was fantastic on the last video that we did together. It's like, how do they not call you guys? And now that we know Fabian with that incredible mustache, <laughs> I want to call him just to hang out and have pizza at my house because my wife's a great cook, just because. Um, hey, so going on to try to finish a couple more questions. Um, mold, is it really that serious? Can it get really serious? And the last question of the day is, why is it so expensive to re uh, remediate when it gets that bad? Because it looks like something you could just wipe. At least that's what it looks like. So is it really that serious? Can it get that serious? And why is it so expensive? Uh, who would like to take that question? I'm going to let Fabian grab that one. All right. Ah, you are on, my man. Go get him. <laughs> okay, so is it really that serious? In regards to that question, we want to go ahead and make sure that we're uh, addressing, uh, of course, the, the mold issue, uh, but we want to see what's causing it. Uh, is, it a, is it a consistent water damage? Is it, um, you know, is it pre-existing damage that happened we never fixed it correctly? Uh, we want to go ahead and make sure that we address it and it's not going to continue happening. So we're not, I mean, even though we, we love our clients, we want to go ahead and co come and visit them all the time, as much time as we can. We don't want to go back there over and over again for the same issue. Um, so we want to go ahead and address the mold issue and um, um, address the actual cause of it as well, uh, if we can assist with that as well. Um, what was the next question? Is it expensive? Yeah, why, why, is, yeah, why is it so expensive? Because it's like my mechanic. The mechanic that I use, which my cars are well maintained, but when I need them, my guy is, I blindly trust him because he could have got me on a, <clears throat> excuse me, a, like an $800 job, but it was damaged from the last time he did some work and he didn't charge me. So. I, I, I trust him, but I don't want to pay him because who wants to pay to fix a car? So with mold on the same parallel, it's, uh, I want to, I want to put a new TV on the wall. I want to paint my house, but when it's mold, it's, oh man, why does this got to be so expensive? Ugh. At least that's the public perception that it must be expensive. So could you elaborate on prior exam? Not that it indicates the future price of other people who might call you. But in the past, what are different like costs? It what are different costs of examples? How bad could it get? And I would assume that expensive ones are probably because they just let it go so long until they finally called you. So, what are some examples of the price ranges that have been in the past, which is no guarantee for the future? And is, why is it so pricey? Why why is it so uh, involved to take care of this? For our technicians that we uh, schedule for these mitigation, uh, remediation issues, or mold, mold remediation, um, all technicians are certified. Uh, we go through ICRC standards, our certifications, uh, so they're educated uh, on what exactly they're doing. Like you mentioned about your mechanic, I can I can go ahead and work on your car. Do you trust me? Do I do I have you know education in regards to uh, what I'm doing? So again, our technicians are, are completely certified. Um, a lot of it goes into as well as our per, 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 our protection, our personal protection, the equipment that goes into uh, a job. How much equipment do we need to address it correctly, uh, and materials that goes into into it, each project? It it varies. Uh, smaller job from anything like a sink leak in the kitchen or a restroom to um, a roof leak that affected the whole room. Um, there's been scenarios where I've walked into homes um, and half of the house is affected with mold because they never they never caught it, um, or you know, it was just a vacant property that never got to and until it's too late. Uh, and it, stuff like that can, can take days uh, to, for us to address, um, or even weeks sometimes. It just depends on the scenario and the actual source of the actual damage. So it sounds like that, um, I guess, it, this might sound a little silly to say, I guess, and it's honest. When 
like that joke when somebody uh, hires a carpenter and there's a squeaky floor and he takes a hammer and goes bang that'll be eight hundred dollars eight hundred dollars for two seconds no it took 20 years of experience training in, in my tools to get to the point where I could just go bang and solve the problem so it'd be a similar parallel where you know, getting the certification, getting the training, having the equipment, maintaining the equipment, updating the equipment, updating the knowledge and the experience, all of that has value. Yeah, that's really what it is. And it's, I mean, we're taking a risk, right? So mm -hmm. not only have our technicians, we've all taken the courses that are necessary in order to follow the work to the correct standard, but our technicians and our people are taking a risk when they're remediating this mold. It's not a safe environment. Um, to go back a little bit, I know we were talking about is mold that serious? Everyone hears mold and they freak out, right? You see mold in your bread and you're automatically like, get it out of my kitchen. I've got to get rid of it. There's about 2000 different types of mold, if not more. And every home has some type of mold, but there are a couple that are the more harmful ones, which is where you want to look into having the environmental company. So if you see mold that you're concerned about, you have two options. You can bring out a company like ours. We'll do a visual inspection um, or you can have it tested. But the how expensive um, a job can be can be related to the length of time. Um, and really, you're not paying, you know, twenty five hundred dollars for me to come out and, and bang my hammer. You're paying for the 20 years of experience for me to be able to come out and bang my hammer. Um, so that's really exactly that's really what it is. Um, so we recommend, you know, if you see water damage, because that's 80% of the time, 90% of the time where your mold is going to come from, if you can see that water damage, it's not a, it'll dry itself out. It'll figure it out. That's usually where your mold is going to come from. So we try to educate our homeowners and let them know, hey, you know, like Fabian was saying, let them know where the cause is. So the next time you see, you know, what you think is a water spot on your ceiling, or you notice that your carpet is damp in places it shouldn't be, hey, I think I'm gonna get that checked out because that water damage is actually less expensive to mitigate and to repair than when it gets mm. to the mold stage. Well said, things are, things are often cheaper to handle early and expensive when they handle late. That, yeah, so, you know, so, so as the phrase goes, cheap is expensive. If you don't spend the money now, you're going to spend a lot more later. And I think there's a, an old, uh, I heard it was like, somebody said it was an old ancient Chinese saying, buy once, cry once. So if you have a small problem <laughs> and you pay maybe, I don't know, a few hundred dollars, or if you're going to buy once and cry once, you don't want to do it when it's, you know, $4,000. So not that we have to be paranoid, but we should have a healthy level of, of suspicion when we see something that we even think might be mold because it, I rather I rather pay a small fee to have someone come out and go that's not mold no you just got a little water damage there and you know that that's we can fix that oh or find out well you know what you got we're gonna go in there and what if you found a whole bunch of mold in the drywall oh man so the problem is gonna be there whether you believe it or not so better to spend a, a smaller fee to get the truth and if it's something incredibly expensive, well, it's expensive whether you knew it was there or not. It's just, it's going to be more expensive later when it really makes itself known. Because mold, to me, the mold you can't see, that's a real big expensive problem. Like a... So yeah, so the, that's pretty much it. Uh, do you guys have any last minute thoughts, tips, suggestions or fun facts you can share regarding the whole mold inspection and handling this problem to leave people with um, because I'm sure the people who are going to watch the playback we have quite a few people watching now but on the playback this is going to get out so are there any last minute thoughts that each of you want to share regarding the whole process of the mold the remediation or any other notes that you want to throw in that people might not necessarily be aware of going back to your last comment like I just want to tell everybody um, like I say, don't be a penny cheap and a dollar foolish. It can definitely be uh, <laughs> be more expensive than what we uh, let it let it just be. So we're here to help community. We, uh, just reach out to us. Any questions or concerns, call us, email us. We're here to help.
Yep. I would, and I would go a step further to suggest that if anybody out there, it's just like with real estate, you know, there's all kinds of agents. Uh, the people I work with are very happy and I, I love what I do full time, dedicated, especially in Irvine or the areas. But there are some people that hire somebody else. It's okay. It happens to all the agents. Just like with you guys, same day restoration. Somebody's just going to go with the cheapest person. Good luck. That's how it just sometimes happens. Then there are people who are going to listen to this podcast and realize, you know, you guys are nice enough to be here. Maybe you're nice to deal with. And I like to imagine that, you know, the fact that you can come out here and contribute something, I would like to see them, if they're going to start calling people, I hope they call you first. And I would suggest they call you first. There are a lot of people, the first person they call, like with real estate, eh, they tend to hire that person. Not always, but they usually do. So I would suggest those of you who, especially for watching this as a recording, if you have mold, fire, smoke damage, you got damage to the house in some way, call Rebecca, have a conversation. Rebecca, does it cost them anything to call you and have a conversation just to get a feel for what you can do? No, absolutely Seriously. not. Um, a lot of what Fabian was saying is exactly what happens. We have a lot of people call and ask questions. You may not use our company. And Tony, we do have people that call back and say, hey, you guys were a little bit more expensive. We are not saying that we are the cheapest company. We're not the most expensive. We are well priced for the work and the certifications and the standards that we offer. Um, but to call and say, this is what I'm looking at. Like, what do you think? I will be more than happy. Fabian will be more than happy. Anyone here at our company will be more than happy to answer those questions and get you set up on the right path. Because if you do have mold, we want to help. And if that means we need to work on price or we need to set up payments, like we will work something out. Um, we have had clients that have gone with another company and then called us back and said, hey, it happens. It does. And it's not ideal, right? That's not what we want for our homeowners. Yeah, but that's a painful <laughs> lesson. Yeah, yeah, it is. But if we can help them ahead of time by informing them, like coming on here with you, Tony, and we appreciate you giving us the opportunity to share, you know, this information because a lot of people have these questions and they don't know, just call. You're not going to be obligated to have an inspection. You're not going to be obligated to hire us. Our goal is to help people. And that's really what we're here to do. We're on the same parallel like that is that uh, I've had, I too had people where I didn't get the listing because, and it's, and it's true, they went because somebody was cheaper. You know, 90 days later, they call me, hey, I had to cancel the contract. Come back, show us what you're going to do. And then they hire me. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes it doesn't. It happens to all businesses. I can't handle all the business. No one can handle all the business. There's always someone for everyone. There's a pot for every lid. And in my experience and other vendors who I deal with, we have very similar stories in that we're not the cheapest. We're not the most expensive but we know what we can do and we're honest and we want to help people you know and when it comes to vendors i think people can be a little skittish in who to call because they'll just google it and just uh pick that person and that's like half the reason i do the podcast is that when i find good people like yourselves that truly have their heart in the right spot and mean well that they see what you're like and go oh all right well let me call them and hopefully they'll be glad they called you and hopefully that after talking to someone like me or talking to someone like you they think Ah, you know what? Okay, let's do this. Because, you know, when people are trying hard to buy on price, there's probably a challenging customer. But I think most people, when they talk to people like uh, uh, you two guys or me, when the honesty comes true and the price makes sense, you know, it's just like going to your doctor, going to your dentist, same thing, lawyer, same thing. You don't want the cheapest. You want someone that's priced right and they're going to do a great job because they care. And that's why we're all here because we care. I care about having a mustache like that one day. I just can't do it. <laughs> oh, you're killing me. He's more, I, I don't feel manly enough now. Thanks. That's what I got out of this episode. <laughs> anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, let me just last minute check. Okay, comments are done. Thanks everyone for being here. Please like, share, subscribe, and on the YouTube channel, do subscribe there and just gently tap that subscribe button and that little bell icon so you know more videos are coming up. Uh, I would recommend contacting uh, Same Day Restoration. It's these guys right here. There's their logo. And once again, their information is right here. There you go. 949-346-3430. Rebecca is fun to talk to as she sat. More fun, actually. She's being a bit reserved, but she's really fun to talk to. Fabian will take care of you. 
Uh, if somebody owes you money, he can. I'm sorry. I, no, I'm thinking of somebody else. I'm from Jersey. It's you know. So no, all serious guys. Seriously, call nine four nine three four six three four three zero. If it sounds like a commercial, it's not. It's just me telling you. Call nine four nine three four six three four three zero. Hey Rebecca, I think I might have mold. I don't want to spend forty million dollars. Oh my God. Have a conversation. It isn't fun. Mold isn't going to just go away. Oh, you're right. I shouldn't be in your kitchen. I'll leave. It ain't going to happen, folks. And if you're going to be selling your house and I see something I think is mold, I don't know. But I'm going to say we got to find out what that mess is in your bathroom and on your bathroom ceiling because I don't know what it is. You know who I'm going to call? 949-346-3430. I'm going to say, help! We got to fix this before we list it. Oh, my God. And the same thing with the buyers. You guys, someone like someone like Fabian comes in, they're going to go, uh-oh, we better drop our price, huh? And as I stand by my buyer and go, yeah, I think we should, huh? Well, hey, you never know, guys. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. I'm Tony Bob Arena with Remax Premier Realty. I live and work in Irvine and the surrounding areas. If I got your attention on this show, wait till you see what I do to sell your house. <laughs> All right. Uh, Rebecca, Fabian, thank you both very much. You guys are free to go. Meanwhile, uh, let's all uh, do our best to take care of everyone. Stay safe. I'm really glad you guys are here to share knowledge. I'm glad for you guys for watching. Thanks a lot. And if you have a topic idea, let me know. Because we got same day restoration. And I'm sure some of you guys might have some questions you're just dying to ask. And you want some free tips? We're here for you. Thanks a lot. Be safe. Everyone stay on the line with me. And I'll see you guys later. Thanks.